And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, President Obama, he refuses to condemn the anti-democratic, alt-radical left protest against President-elect Donald Trump. Now, earlier today, while in Germany, Obama was given the chance to speak out against all of this out-of-control behavior. And instead, this is what he said. I would not advise people who feel strongly uh, or are concerned about some of the issues that have been raised during the course of the campaign. I wouldn't advise them to be silent. Well, some are even being violent, pretty unbelievable, but it does fall in line with everything that President Obama stands for. Now, I tried to warn the country and everyone back in 2008 that Obama, well, he was a disciple of the alt-radical left. Remember, he embraces the Saul Alinsky rules for radical tactics. Remember, he palled around with unrepentant domestic terrorists, Bill Ayers, Bernadine Dorn. He even started his political career in their living room. And they bombed the Pentagon, the Capitol, and uh, New York City Police Headquarters. Now, President Obama, remember, he sat in the pews of Reverend Wright for 20 years, the Church of GD America, listening to things like this. The stuff we have done overseas is now brought right back into our own front yards. America's chickens are coming home. No, no, no. Not God bless America. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America. Alt radical left. The president spent 20 years in the church of GD America. Now, since the president refuses to speak out against these anti-democratic agitators, well, let me remind him about what has been going on in the president's hometown of Chicago. Now, a man was severely beaten by an angry mob after a traffic incident because they thought he was a Trump supporter. Look at this, Mr. President. Yeah! Yeah, he bought a Trump! Yeah! Don't vote Trump. Don't vote Trump. Don't vote Trump. And Mr. President, did you see this mother in Texas who's now under investigation after kicking her seven-year-old son out of the house? Why? Because he voted for Donald Trump in a mock election at school. Take a look. Since you voted for Donald Trump, get your and get out. The suitcase is packed by the door. Been packed since this morning. Bye. Everyone, come out here. Let's go. Come on. Take the sign. Bye. Let's go. Now, these are just two of many examples. Now, we've also seen continual protests all across the country that have resulted in the destruction of property, unlawful behavior, and arrest. Now, President Obama, don't you think you should follow in the footsteps of your predecessor? Remember President George W. Bush? He stayed out of the political arena, and he let you, his successor, do your job. President Bush, he never responded to President Obama's relentless blaming and name calling. Instead, President Bush, he actually did take the high road, as you have often taken the low road, like the Democrats claim that you always do. Take a look. I could sit here all day and try and get you to comment on, on President Obama, and I'm not going to get anywhere. Correct. Because I've known you. I know you very well. Yes, you do. Why did you make that decision? Because I'm sure... You have a lot to say. <laughs> you're not. You're. you're we talked politics before we came in. Here. You're very engaged and yes. aware of what's going on. I'm very aware of what's going on. I don't think it's good for the country to have a former president uh, undermine a current president. I think it's bad for the presidency, for that matter. I know the hair looks awful now, but why do I suspect President Obama will never show the same amount of grace and respect when it comes to Donald Trump and his presidency? Here's my prediction today and now. President Obama will not be able to contain himself, and he will go after Mr. Trump every single chance he gets once Obama is out of office. And here's another thing. After Donald Trump's sweeping victory, President Obama, he's been in complete and utter denial that the election had anything to do with him or his failed policies. Now, the facts, they say otherwise. Now, since 2009, under President Obama, well, let's see. The Democrats have lost 13 U.S. Senate seats, meaning from blue to red. 64 U.S. House seats, blue to red, 13 governorships, blue to red, and get this, 33 state houses. Wow, what a legacy. Now, our next president, Donald Trump, has been handed a huge mess. This is almost beyond repair, thanks to President Obama. That's why this election was so important. And now Republicans, they have no excuses why they can't get things done. President-elect Trump needs to keep in mind that the media, they're never going to like him. 
especially after WikiLeaks exposed that the press was openly colluding with the Clinton campaign, like CNBC and MSNBC and CNN and the New York Times and the whole rest of them. Now, the president-elect also needs to understand the Republican establishment, they're not going to be his friend either. He needs to stay focused and remember the promises to you, the American people. You know the promises, repeal and replace Obamacare, identify radical Islam, lower taxes, repatriate corporate profits, build the border wall, appoint originalists to the Supreme Court, fix inner cities, energy independence, drain the swamp, send education back to the states, you know, say radical Islam, vet refugees, all of these important issues, free trade. He has to remember you, the American people, what I call the forgotten men and women of this country in this election. Now, that list is where Trump needs to keep his focus. If President Obama, if he wants to keep calling for protests, then that will be his legacy. One of division, rich versus poor, old versus young, black versus white, always dividing. That's what you get under President Obama. My advice to President-elect Trump, stay focused. Here with Reaction, the editor-in-chief of Life Zet, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram. Um, I talk about the alt-radical left. Who are these people? Occupy. Think, yeah. Right? Occupy? Yeah. They, they are Occupy Wall Street. MoveOn.org. Black Lives Matter. Pigs in a blanket fry them like bacon. What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them now? Weren't they embraced by both Hillary and Obama? Does that make them alt radical left, meaning the president and Hillary? Yeah, the nomenclature is so tedious. It's used to demean and dismiss uh, the viewpoints of more traditionally focused American Sean. And I'd throw in La Raza, the Mexican American legal defense um, organization, MALDEF. Uh, there are a whole bunch of amnesty groups that are loosely connected that have the same goal, which is to essentially eliminate any border enforcement in the United States and uh, bring about kind of a borderless uh, North America. That's their ultimate goal. They, they say it's just, a, you know, things like immigration reform. But when you really dig into the more radical statements of some of their founders, it's much more uh, uh, reliant on a, uh, an America that ceases to exist as we know it, that, that, that allows people to come and go without any uh, question about legality. The, the, you watch the media, they're like sharks, and they're now circling. They've been exposed as colluding with the Clinton campaign. 97% yeah. in the MRC poll said that did not impact their vote, although most people now recognize media bias and journalism is dead, as we have discussed a lot. But they're ready to pounce over Ivanka's bracelet. They're ready to pounce that he went out with his family for a hamburger and didn't notify the press. Um, I think it's only going to get worse. How will this impact Trump's decision making for the cabinet and people that he hires? Because they're going to look for any little thing that maybe somebody said or did in their past. Well, if, if past is uh, if past is prologue, it won't have any effect on what the president elect is going to do as far as decisions on the cabinet. Uh, he, he was hammered throughout most of the election cycle, most of the primaries, and certainly in the general election. I mean, there wasn't a, a day that went by when there wasn't some attempt to, you know, take down the whole, the whole Trump apparatus. But he didn't really change his approach all that much. He, he kept his focus for the most part with a few exceptions on uh, the pledge to the American people that he was going to change the path that we were on away from the old establishment order and to a much more populist, pragmatic approach to both foreign policy and domestic policy where, uh, you know, we, we finally get our economic house in order, at least start, start down that path. We enforce our borders. We get rid of Obamacare. Start to dismantle this massive federal government, Sean, that keeps ballooning in Washington. And all these attempts to to cut waste, fraud, and abuse over the over the decades haven't really amount, amounted to much. We need this government cut How? back. We need it trimmed back. We need a scalpel. We need a we need yeah. a meat cleaver in you some cases. But yeah. yeah, it needs to be cut back. Uh, let, let can I say something this. about the protesters just yeah, uh, briefly? Uh, when you go back to Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, and I know you've talked about it you know, so well on this show over the years, but there's that one rule that says that the, the protests have to be relentless and they have to be so disruptive and, and, and so constant that they, that they uh, change and disrupt the normal order of things. And you can never have any conversation between the protesters and their opponents. The opponents of the protesters always have to be described as evil, um, 
immoral and evil. So that's what's really playing out in, in these, this very, you know, organized effort to disrupt the normal course of, of, of whether it's commerce or traffic or even schools to some effect. Yeah. And, and it's straight out of Saul Alinsky. I mean, this is a this is a Saul Alinsky when pattern. You went to, uh, when you went to Dartmouth, did you have a, a cry room? Did you ever color and coloring books or play with Play-Doh or get hot cocoa from your professors? Any of yeah, that happen? No, no, I, I was just... I was causing trouble at the Dartmouth Review when I was editing that. So I was, uh, they, they, had, they had other knives out for us at Dartmouth back then. But now they, it's really gotten much worse from, from the mid-80s, Sean. It's, it's now, They've got a cry like a room. What dog. is a cry room? What I'm is gonna, it? Come on. I, haven't cr I don't know what it means to cry. Can you imagine I come on national TV, Obama no. wins in, in 2008. I fought my heart out to, to inform the American people he would be horrible. I end up being right. I wish I wasn't. Yeah. And, and I came on the air with a, a dog to comfort me and, a, and have somebody, a producer, bring me a hot cocoa well, and remember, a coloring Mass book. A yeah, coloring well, book, Play-Doh? No, no, no. Yeah, they bring Play-Doh, coloring books, Legos. I mean, we're infantilizing <laughs> adulthood, Sean. And remember, masculinity itself yeah. is considered a threat on college campuses. Yeah, that's masculinity, true. Masculinity, you know, a guy's guy. No, you can't be that. That's That in and of itself is microaggression. And so you well, have to rein in all the masculine, uh, you know, uh, pronouns. You have to get rid of all that. And everything has to be gender norms so everyone feels all the same. It's may just, I uh, please have permission to kiss you goodnight? You say to your date. Exactly. Uh, Isn't that romantic? That, that's, that's so romantic. Would you yes. like to come into my cry room and color with me? Great day. Um, All right. No. Good to, thanks, Laura. Good, Good to, to see you, Sean. you. Thank you. And coming up, Senator Jeff Sessions was in Trump Tower today for the transition meetings. The Trump transition team, they're hard at work to fill these key cabinet and White House roles. He's, he'll, we will speak with Herman Cain, Ari Fleischer. They're coming up next. Donald Trump, I've been in a number of meetings with him while he talks to people who are under consideration and he'd like to meet and talk to and just see how who they are and he just does a really good job. All right, that was Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions at Trump Tower earlier today talking about President-elect Donald Trump's involvement in transition meetings. Now Trump has a lot of important cabinet and White House roles to fill. Today he tweeted, quote, my transition team, which is working long hours and doing a fantastic job, We'll be seeing many great candidates today. South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, Florida Governor Rick Scott were also at Trump Tower today. Joining us now with reaction, Fox News contributor Herman Cain, former White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer. Herman, one of the big surprises, and, and Nikki Haley was not a Trump supporter. Mitt Romney reportedly is being considered for Secretary of State. Look, I, I think Mitt Romney would have been a great president, but the way he acted here, no loyalty. I, he should not be under consideration in my view, your thoughts? Well, we don't know if he's seriously under consideration or if this is Trump's way of trying to bring the party together. Remember, that was a lot well, of division. Well, that would be fine. I think that's, you know, what yeah. put water under the bridge, let's start over. Right. I it, think that's a nice be, gesture. It, it could be an indication of that. But here's the other thing. Blessed are the peacemakers, think, Herman. I read it in a book. <laughs> here's the other thing, Sean, that I believe is happening. One of the strengths that I've talked about on your show that Donald Trump has, which most great leaders do, he's able to listen. You heard that statement by Senator Jeff Sessions. Donald Trump is in the listening mode right now, and that is a good thing. And he's not just listening to people who supported him, he's listening to some people who reluctantly yeah. voted for him. So I think that it was a good sign, I think it was a good thing, and All right, he let me is ask Ari. listening now. Here's my criteria. How much controversy will they cause? The media is ready to pounce, sorry. I think that's one. How loyal are they going to be? Because stuff's going to happen, and he's going to need people that can get through the hard times. Uh, that's important to me. Will they follow Trump's agenda, not their own agenda? You know how selfish they can be. Are they more than qualified for the job? And I think a full vetting, like they, what they did with Mike Pence, worked out so well. Do that for everybody, especially top positions. Is that a good criteria? It is, Sean, because the absolute most important criteria to serve a president is to do what the president wants you to do. You need to reflect the president. It's that person who put his name on the ballot, ran and got the voters to approve them. It's not the staff and it's not the cabinet secretaries. And so that dedication to doing it the president's way, the way he wants to do it, while internally, you can clash all you want. Give him the benefit of your advice, even if it's 180 degrees different. 
But when the president decides something, you full-heartedly and absolutely go out there yeah. and fight for it. That's the job and you of did the a great job, the cabinet. And I'm sure maybe there were times you had different views than President sure. Bush, but you were loyal. You, you Loyalty, how, can, how, can he appoint someone that was so disloyal during the campaign and trust them? I don't think so. Well, I think that's a great question here. And, and frankly, I'm kind of wondering if the Secretary of State thing is for real. I don't uh, believe and, it and either. Let me give you some advice to all these names being thrown about. They're unsourced. Half the time, it's just somebody put their name in there. Yesterday, defense analyst in the Reagan administration, Frank Gaffney, was up for something. And then Frank said today that nobody in the transition even has talked to him. So a lot of these things are just rumors that get put into print. Yeah, you know, as Newt Gingrich told me, Herman, those that know aren't talking. Those right. that don't know are, are out there spewing whatever comes into their mind. Which, by the way, that's what our media does now. That, but yes. that media is, you know, they're pouncing on him for going to dinner with his own family and not fully reporting on the fact that he's going to get a hamburger next door. That became a big controversy for the media. Some of, some of the liberal media admitted, like the New York Times, that they were biased and they did not present the facts. They haven't changed yet. They're going to be kicking and screaming, nitpicking every move that Donald Trump makes. But get back, back to the people question again. Donald Trump has demonstrated to me not just from knowing him, but the fact that he's been successful and his selection of Vice President-elect Mike Pence, his instincts about people, going back to loyalty, he will be able to tell because of his instincts whether or not somebody can be loyal to him, even though they may not have been in his cheering section when he ran for president. Well said. All right. Thank you both. Welcome back to Hannity. So president-elect Donald Trump won the election fair and square, but some liberals enrolled in colleges all across the country and not taking it so well. Now, in order to help these fragile souls cope with the thought of a Trump presidency, some school administrators, they are reportedly offering great services for these kids, including, let's see, disaster counseling, therapy dogs, faculty sanctioned cry-ins where the faculty passes out hot cocoa to the poor little students. One university even was handing out coloring books and Play-Doh so they can play with it. Now, despite their best effort to coddle these students, well, many still participated in the mass walkouts and protests in order to voice their concern. Now, CampusReform.org recently attended one such protest. This was at Townsend University and spoke with some of the poor, pampered little children. Joining us with a reaction, Fox News contributors Lisa Booth, as well as the author of A Time for a Turning Point, founder and executor, executive director of Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, is with us. All right, Charlie, let's start with you. Um, Maybe if they got somebody in their family that was sick and dying, their dog died, um, you got a diagnosis of cancer, your father, God forbid, has a heart attack. Maybe those are reasons to cry. Yeah. Crying, Play-Doh, coloring books, therapy dogs. hot cocoa, therapy dogs, aromatherapy. What's going to happen what when it, something actually bad happens yeah, to them? Exactly. I mean, seriously, what, 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 here's what I can't understand about the left. When will they realize this is one of the reasons why Donald Trump won? You know, the political correctness wave that swept across this country, Donald Trump was a direct response to that. And look, Donald Trump was so effective at being able to speak to middle Americans that are fed up with the safe space spreading on college campuses, the microaggressions, the trigger warnings. Colleges have become a place where they want everyone to look different but think the same. And how dare someone challenge that liberal orthodoxy on our college campuses? I, maybe I, I think it, this deserves to be mocked, quite we, frankly. I, I don't know, very, I don't know what else to do with this. I, I, I definitely don't feel sorry for that. What is a that? crying room in college where a professor gives you hot cocoa? What Who is knows, that, Sean? Lisa Booth? What? Help I don't, me. I don't want to find out. I don't want to be there with those individuals. <laughs> Look, this, this is, this is left-wing lunacy, so it doesn't have to make sense because progressivism does it make sense? And the reason why they are so upset is the fact that they should be afraid because their vision for the future, their progressive vision for the future was rejected by Americans last week. And that is a positive thing for this country. And I do sincerely hope that this coddling society that has happened uh, under President Obama and has really increased under President Obama in the past eight years, I hope it comes to an end because the biggest fear here, Sean, these individuals, this is not the next workforce. These are not the future leaders of America that if they lose an election, they have to go into you a know, cry room with Play-Doh and puppies. Life is tough 
and they need to recognize that. You know, if there's any Americans, I keep saying this election was about the forgotten man, and I swore I wasn't going to do this because I did it for over a year on purpose. I gave out the numbers of Americans out of the labor force, 95 million Americans, uh, nearly 50 million on food stamps, 50 million Americans right. in poverty, 13 million more Americans on food stamps than when Obama first became president, 8 million more in poverty. Those people to me, you know, the day in, day out grind of not having hope, an opportunity or a job or the ability to put a roof over their head and food in their refrigerator, you know what? I could see them crying. I would yes. understand. That, that's the forgotten men that's and women. That's the real that, suffering. That's the real and, suffering and, of real and, Americans. And the real story that's been happening over the last eight years. And, you know, shame on these professors and these administrators for allowing this to continue. Seriously, you know, if I was in charge of one of these colleges and I found out that a whole lecture hall class left and a professor let that happen, I would do everything in my power to try to discipline that professor. Obviously, you can't fire some of them because of tenure. And then you have principals at these schools in Los Angeles. I'm so proud of our students for walking out of class in solidarity against, you know, President-elect Trump. Are you kidding me? Any and, adult that plays with Play-Doh. That's serious <laughs> problems. And, serious and problems. And colors and coloring books, short of doing it with a child in your life. Well, and Sean... They need some, therapy, all right? They don't well, need college. <laughs> they need the well, therapy. And Sean, not to mention the fact, if, if some of the, these things are happening at state universities, that's taxpayer funding oh. going to some of this ridiculousness. And the numbers that you brought up and the statistics well. you brought up of the forgotten man... Well, guess what? College students and college grads have it rough in terms of the economy. Well, maybe then and the they fact can that go to their cry of, room. Well, because of President Obama's failed policies, of failed, the failed economy. But, I, but uh, those recent graduate students are going to have a tough time finding a job under the policies that we've seen over the past eight years. Not to mention student loan debt with when we look at the correlation between the amount of money that the federal government puts into it and college is uh, racking up the prices across the country. Yeah, I have some advice, as I've been saying. Grow up, grow yeah. up, get a life, take your hot cocoa and your coloring books and your Play-Doh and grow up, put or it aside. Hug a tree. I, I can't even believe <laughs> this is happening. By the way, at Ivy League universities. Supposed best schools. We knew liberals' heads were exploded. I did not know this was going to happen. It's, it's kind of entertaining, though. It's, yeah, it's kind of funny. Oh, this is, you have to laugh here's a my prediction. The left is going to go insane in the next four years. And it's going to be chronicled right here. And I, in all honesty, will enjoy every minute of it. It's, it's, it's going to be huge. It's going to be a, a total crack up. And by the way, the world will end up getting better without them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Even with them crying, we'll do better. Anyway, thanks, guys. Welcome back to Hannity. So this week, the alt-radical left mainstream media, they continue to ferociously attack President-elect Donald Trump and his family. Watch these insane examples. The president-elect's daughter, Ivanka Trump, is taking heat today for selling ice on 60 Minutes. Her own company using the new First Family's interview on 60 Minutes to promote her jewelry line, sending this alert to fashion reporters, noting Ivanka was wearing, quote, her favorite bangle from the Metropolis collection on 60 Minutes. The bracelet retails at $10,800. Donald Trump managed to find a place in Manhattan where he could get applause, which is not easy these days with constant protests in front of his building. He managed to get those applause by going to into, into a restaurant filled with very rich people. Now, several news outlets, so-called news outlets, are running articles saying Melania Trump, she changed her story on her college education. Why does this matter? Here with Reaction, Salem, nationally syndicated radio host Larry Elder, the author of the number one book in the entire country, Amazon's best-selling children's book, uh, Take Heart, My Child, The Mother's Dream, Fox & Friends co-host Ainsley Earhart. Uh, all right, so I want to understand this. So, okay, the media is upset Donald Trump took his family to dinner and he didn't tell the press so and he ordered a hamburger in case you're interested and so they're upset Ivanka's wearing her own jewelry line and told people oh my god this is look at this what is going this is insanity it's like breaking news bump 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 we have Fox <laughs> News alert she is wearing her favorite bangle from her metropolis collection it is gold with diamonds like, by the way look who nice cares? I know <laughs> listen she's smart All right, and then she had to put out a statement Larry that said I mean I feel sorry for her I mean it's ridiculous 
because that's standard operating procedure. Oh, she goes out, pictures taken, right. they show the jewelry that she wears her own line. So what? <laughs> I mean, well, shockingly, now we will adjust. <laughs> it's crazy. Shockingly, Sean, there's a liberal bias against Republicans. Uh, no. In uh, when George Herbert Walker Bush was running against Bill Clinton, Investors Business Daily found that 90 percent of the front page newspaper stories about the economy were negative, even though we were in a year and a half economic recovery. Next month, Bill Clinton gets elected. Only 14 percent of the very same front page newspaper stories were negative. Same data, same economic news. It was just being interpreted very differently. 2000, George W. Bush gets elected. The Wall Street Journal runs something, Sean, called the Homelessness Rediscovery Index, arguing that now all of a sudden the newspapers were going to be very interested uh, in the plight of homelessness. Sure enough, there was an upward spike in the stories. If anybody had any doubt about liberal bias, WikiLeaks put it to rest. You have these major outlets, Washington Post, New York Times, colluding with the DNC and Hillary to get her elected. People like Dan and Milbank asked the DNC for suggestions for a column he was doing called the 10 most outrageous things that Donald Trump ever said. They gave him 10 suggestions. He used eight of them. Are you kidding me? Are you no. kidding me? All right, we got four years, if not eight years. Get ready, Sean. It's no. only going to oh, get no, worse. No. It, this is, this is going to be a roller coaster. The, the media is sitting in wait, especially as it relates to those people that get big appointments by Donald Trump. I think the, the funniest and saddest and most pathetic thing, though, Ainsley, is these co poor college students that are having cry-ins and cry rooms <laughs> and aromatherapy <laughs> and pet therapy uh, and Play-Doh sessions and coloring, coloring book sessions. Sessions and their professors are making them hot cocoa because they can't cope with the reality that their candidate lost. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. They need to get a job. They need to go drink a beer, go to a keg party, and go to a football game like most college students. You know, give me a break. Who has time for that? I would, I'd rather go to the keg party right? and go to the football game. College man. is fun, people. Who, who plays with play doh? <laughs> who plays coloring books? Five year olds. By the way, people that would buy your book. By the way, how how happy are you? It's the number one book in the country. Well, a lot of that is because of you no, and the great people at Fox. We yeah. have a great team here, and you all have been such a family to me and embraced me. I didn't know the first thing about writing a book. I consulted you a lot throughout the process because you have a lot of experience, and you've hit how many number one bestsellers? Three and done. Never again. <laughs> I'm never writing It's a long process, but it's so yeah. exciting. And, yeah. it, and you guys who have bought this book are amazing. In fact, we're running out of these books. They're replenishing the books. They're printing them as we speak. So you will get them the first week of December if they're out. Well, they're the Barnes & Noble, Noble has a bunch right? of them. Amazon yeah. is just sold out, but they're getting them all next week. So you will get your book before Christmas, and you can yeah. buy, buy signed copies. And I'm going out to do a signing tonight. Night, in fact, so it's, right. it's been a fun experience. All right, and by the way, uh, Larry, have you? When's the last time you played with Play Doh? When's the last time you <laughs> used a coloring book? Do you, it, I don't, it's do been you, a while. Do you, <laughs> do you drink hot cocoa anymore? I think I prefer Irish, uh, an Irish coffee. <laughs> Somehow, some way, I got a feeling these students are going to motor on through this and, and get and get by. Somehow. What is a cry room? What is a crying room? <laughs> you know, when you're in your 20s, though, no, you like are I don't. To discover who you are. You fight cry? with your parents. You think you know better than everyone else. Wow. That's what they're going through. Okay, aromatherapy? I agree. It's ridiculous. We don't even take care of vets that watch their friends' right. legs blown right. off or hey, die. Listen, listen, they're worried about Ivanka Trump's gold bracelet that yeah. she wears. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chelsea Clinton's wedding is being paid for with charity money, with money that people gave to the Clinton Foundation that is supposed to go to children over in Africa yeah. that are dealing with AIDS. All right, Ainsley, you've been on our show 10 years. Uh, you're now, it's your one year anniversary almost on, on Fox and Friends. Congratulations. Thank Good you. luck with the book. Thank Number you. One in the country. We're really proud of you. Thank Good job. You. I All appreciate right. your help. Donald Trump, it's hosted by TMZ's Harvey Levin. Now it takes viewers inside the Manhattan resident of President-elect Donald Trump, gives you a look at some of his most important possessions. Now the show is going to air right here on the Fox News Channel. I have the night off tomorrow, 10 p.m. tomorrow night. Joining us now is TMZ founder, uh, a good friend, by the way, Harvey Levin. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for the time slot, Sean. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, just take it over. It's all right. I'm on the contract. I'm not worried. Uh, you know, for all, I'm a fan of your show. I well, thank you. I grew up watching Candid Camera. This is Candid Camera taken on steroids and growth hormone to the next, <laughs> next, next level. It's that good. Um, oh, my gosh. But you know what's funny? I watched that show, but then I watched this show that you did with Trump. And as I was watching it, the whole time I kept thinking, why, why didn't Trump show some of the side of him that he showed you 
before we went to the ballot box. This was very intimate. Yeah, and, and you know, the idea of the show, Sean, is to trace somebody's life through the objects that they choose to keep from childhood to present. And the objects become kind of a, a, a jumping off point to talk about what was going on in their life at that time. And it was really interesting. I agree with you that, you know, making it kind of a relaxed setting where he could connect to what he was looking at and even get emotional about it um, really showed a side certainly I haven't seen before. And I, I don't think anybody who watched him on television the last 16 months really saw. But he talked very candidly about you, you showed something with Freddie there. You know, we went on to talk about the fact that Freddie died at 42 of alcoholism. And I just asked him, I said, look, I said, are you afraid that you have that gene uh, and that you might be an alcoholic? And he was almost shockingly candid with me about it. He has fears. And we talked about, um, you know, why his dad sent him to military school for five years. That was a, uh, by the way, that's a great moment. I don't want to give it away, and you also have, for example, uh, uh, details of a letter to Trump from Nixon. You ask him about uh, his wife, Melania, and I thought he was a very honest answer there. Um, he even wanted to be a filmmaker. There, there are some real interesting moments. I learned a lot about him that I never knew. Yeah, and, um, you know, we spent a lot of time, you know, digging up, doing research and just really trying to understand him and his life. And it's very different from, you know, it's funny because I used to think of him almost as a linear kind of guy that he kind of is who he is. And you didn't kind of see a variation in terms of emotions or conflicts or anything like that. And I saw way more of them in the time that I spent with him. And I think you see it on you the know, show. What was really good about it and I'm not sucking up to you I, because I learned so much from this. What was so refreshing is you weren't playing gotcha. You were, tr you were asking real questions in an in a intimate environment. He brought you in his inner sanctum in a way. And it ended up giving us a side of Trump that I, I, I don't think most Americans know. How much did it change your view of him? Well, you know, I, uh, I know you've known him for a long time. I've known him as well. And, you know, I knew him a long time before he, he announced that he was going to run for president. And I saw more of this side than I've seen in what I've been looking at for the last 16 months. Yeah, me too. And, and, and you know, what it does is it